Of course, domestic machines aren't so sophisticated and have to make do with their lumps of concrete. And if you chop a modern machine in half, you realise what a vast number of bits and pieces there are. And of course, each one of them could go wrong in all sorts of ways. The real miracle is that most of them work perfectly all the time. The first thing that happens when you turn the machine on is that water gushes in, released by a sort of electric tap called a solenoid valve. Simply pass the current through it and the valve opens. The clever thing about these valves is it's just a small cylinder and a small coil and it has to resist the full force of mains water pressure. So I have to actually put my hat finger over the edge quite hard to stop the water coming out. Whoops. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and uh, it does this by using the pressure of the water itself to stop uh, the water coming out. This part is the solenoid, a sort of electromagnet. The steel piston in the middle is attracted by the magnetism and pulled in when the current is switched on. The piston rests on the centre of a rubber disc which acts as the seal. In this disc there are two tiny holes. The hole in the side lets water into the space above the disc and then the water pressure itself keeps it down. When the current is passed, the piston uncovers the centre hole and lets some water leak out. This lowers the pressure above the disc and lets it pop up and the water flow through. Today, solenoid valves have millions of uses controlling liquids and gases. For instance, the ironing machine in the laundry uses solenoid valves to release blasts of compressed air to blow the sheets flat. Each sheet hits a switch which opens the valves at precisely the right moment. A more spectacular use for a solenoid valve is to roll a car for a stunt for a film or television. We've got the solenoid valve fitted on top of this tube, which is in effect a cannon, and inside the tube is a large chunk of wood which pushes the car over. In the boot of the car, we've got a compressed air cylinder full of air at quite high pressure, about 150 pounds per square inch. And when I press the button, which is attached to the handbrake lever, that releases all the air through the solenoid valve, push against wood and whoosh, away we go. It's far better fun than a washing machine solenoid. A stunt like this is carefully planned so as hardly anything ever goes wrong. And of course, I'm tied into that seat. It's sort of painfully tight with, with special sort of aircraft type seat belts. It's so tight it actually hurts me, but you can't afford to move an inch or so because uh, the impact when you roll over really does hurt. And as soon as the car starts to roll, all electric is cut so it avoids any fire. There's only a pint of petrol on board so that if the thing did catch fire, it's a very minor fire. This is the actual um, cannon piston, which does the damage, which pushes it over. As you can see, it's really crude. Just a piece of car in a tube to seal it on the walls of the cylinder, so that when the air comes through, it pushes it out. It doesn't need a lot of energy to tip it, because it's almost on the point of turning before you hit the button. It's the last one I ever do. I promised that to everybody. This is the second time I've promised not to do it again. <laughs> Until the next job comes along. In this cutaway machine, you can see the position of all the parts we've been looking at. There's the lump of concrete. There are the solenoid valves where the water comes in through the soap dispenser and into the drum. And this is the pressure switch. 
Water is gushing into the machine through the solenoid valve and when it reaches the right level it's got to stop and that's what the pressure switch is for. Um, I can show it more clearly using this bottle to replace the washing drum. So we turn the water on and we've added some dye in here to make it a bit more clear what's happening. And the switch has switched the water off. Well now what's actually going on is that air is trapped inside this little bottle on the side and as the level rises the air is being squashed and actually increasing the pressure down this little pipe into the switch. I think I can show this, prove this quite clearly by, it has exactly the same effect if I blow into the switch as, as, as the little bottle on the side. So if I release the pressure the water will start coming out and when I blow into it <clears throat> Let's turn it off now. Well, what's going on inside this switch is this is this is one with uh, a similar site, slightly different make, but it's the same sort of thing. We've taken it uh, in half. Now, in this half, the air goes in here, and there's a rubber disc here. And as the pressure increases, the rubber expands. On this half, the rubber pushes the metal and flicks over the switch. Well, pressure switches, like solenoid valves, have all sorts of uses. I used one on this machine, which I made years and years ago. Um, put the... Well, the, um, the pressure switch is used on this machine to switch the motor off when the balloon bursts. Inside here, there's a small secondary tube that goes down to the pressure switch at the back. And as long as there's the pressure inside the balloon, the motor will keep running. But when the balloon bursts, the pressure drops and that turns the motor off. Once the washing machine's full of water, the heater comes on to get it to the right temperature. You never see the heater elements because they're outside the inner drum. But they're just like the elements inside an electric kettle. We've cut one in half here and in the middle there's a fine wire. And it's this wire that actually carries the current. And closely packed all round it there's this white powder, magnesium oxide. This is an electrical insulator to stop the outer casing becoming live. This uh, white powder is, is obviously the same as the powder you get when you burn a bit of magnesium. It's used because it retains its stability and insulation at the high temperatures inside the element. At the same time as the water starts heating up, the wash action starts. The speed that the drum goes round is critical. The clothes just have to get round to the top and then fall, and that's what squashes the water through them. After going one way round, they pause and then go back round the other way. This stops the clothes getting tangled up, just like in the eddy. Once the wash has finished, the next stage is the spin. But this apparently simple idea is quite recent and early machines used much more elaborate ways to dry the clothes. I must get this done.